Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. First of all, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your really busy schedule to be here. I really appreciate it. So I want to just start out by asking you to, um, will you just talk through a little bit of your career path and your journey? Did you always know you wanted to be an attorney or how did that happen for you? Sure. Yeah. No, I don't think anybody really kind of necessarily plans on, you know, maybe some people do plan on being an attorney, but my dad was actually an attorney and pretty much every attorney you'll meet will tell you, do not become an attorney. (laughs) (laughs) But you did it. (laughs) I did it anyway. Yes. I bucked the, uh, the advice of my dad, but I ended up going to, uh, I had initially thought I wanted to go into psychology is really what I initially studied in college. So That isn't necessarily, you know, you don't really necessarily know what you want to do in college, but, you know, people are interesting in general. So I took that path of least resistance and studied psychology like everybody who doesn't know what they want to do. (laughs) And so I ended up working um, at one point for a trust and estates law firm as a paralegal to just kind of try it out. And I ended up going to law school and I went to law school part time and I worked full time during the day. Um, so that was kind of, yeah, I just kind of fell into, into going to law school like so many people do. Um, and then, yeah. I mean, so were you working as a paralegal while you were in law school? I Is was. You were. Yes. Oh, interesting. I yes. I bet that was really, I bet that was really interesting to see the practical application of it while you were doing The schooling, yes. It was. I think that law school doesn't teach you how to be an attorney, as, you know, a lot of schooling does. And it gives you the Mm -hmm. tools that you need to use to apply, but it doesn't give you the knowledge that you need to be able to actually do the job. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So. And did you, did it help you to formulate which area of law you wanted to focus on? I don't think law school necessarily does that. You really need to, it's trial by error like it is with anything else in life. So Mm -hmm. I went and and dabbled in a few different areas of law to see what I liked and what I didn't like. And when I did like something, I still dabbled a little bit more to make sure that it was what I liked Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then came back to trust and estates. And that's what I do now. Yeah. So, yes. So trust and estates, why, why, why do you like it? Why is that the area that you landed on? Well, I I like helping people, and I also have a tax background. I did an LLM in tax, and so I can apply um, saving money on taxes when I have taxable estates um, to helping people. And I think that that, it's a a feel-good situation in a lot of ways, because what you're doing is you're helping somebody formulate a plan. You're helping somebody navigate something that they don't want to deal with and is unpleasant to deal with and and making it a holistic experience it's not as terrible as i thought it would be but it's also really important to have all of those pieces in place Mm -hmm. and so it's just being able to kind of navigate somebody through something making them comfortable enough with you to be able to share things that sometimes are a little bit difficult to share because i can't create a plan for somebody unless i know um some of the some of the you know, dirty little family secrets that people don't necessarily want to share with with a stranger, especially. Everybody wants to kind of think that they live a somewhat perfect life. And really the reality is that nobody does. (laughs) Everybody's got stuff. Um, So, yeah. You definitely get the intimate details of people's lives. (laughs) We do. We do. We do. And they have to feel comfortable enough to disclose that stuff to us. And that's the hard part because people will keep things to themselves and there are things that we need to know in order to do our job. And Mm -hmm. if they don't feel comfortable sharing those things and we're not gonna be able to formulate a plan that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. So how have you navigated a a very taxing professional career with motherhood? What what does that look like for you? 
Well, motherhood's never easy, as we all know. <laughs> I had kids pretty late in the game. I was 37 when I had my, my first child, and now I have three. So it went kind of fast and, and sporadically. We've got a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a six-month-old. So it's challenging. And you think that there's this concept called work-life balance, and the reality is it just doesn't exist. You know, you just kind of slog through it and you put one foot in front of the other and things don't go the way that you think they're going to go and your day doesn't ever go the way you think it's going to go. And you just have to get over the concept that you had this prearranged plan and find a new way to, to navigate around it. And You do? Really? <laughs> Is that what motherhood teaches you? <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's not always pretty. It's not always... You know? It, no, your life isn't like perfectly. I know. Yeah. Especially with <laughs> the three ages that you have. That's a lot on top of a full time practice. Sure. You, yeah. 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 So, any words of wisdom? We have a lot of younger listeners that are aspiring, aspiring to six figures in their career. Some mm -hmm. of them might be contemplating or even on a legal track right now. Any great words of wisdom from? Someone that's a little bit further along in your journey. Well, I think you really need to hone in on what you love versus making money. You know, if you love what you do and you find passion in that, you're going to make money doing that as long as you apply yourself in the right way. But that's really the starting point is, is finding what you love or you're not going to love every aspect of your job. That's just not the reality of, of any part of life. There's always parts of your job that you're not going to like doing. <laughs> but liking the core of what you do and understanding that a lot of it, too, is stuff that needs to be done in order to get where you need to go. Mm -hmm. And it's just not, it's not always going to be, it's not all roses, right? There's a lot of hard work that goes into building anything. And you have to be able to do that work in order to build. And then you will be able to do more and more of the things that you love as you do the hard work. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the advice that I would, that I would give to people, that, it, that it's hard work, right? You can't just think you're going to step in and it's going to be all fun and games. Um, but at the same time, if you work really, really hard, you can build something. You'll make a lot of money. It takes time to build anything. And once you do, it just starts to spin and, and network and web and, and it gets bigger and bigger and grows bigger and bigger. And it, it's a good thing, but you have to put in the hard work. That's such great advice, I think, in any career path, the legal field or not. I think that that holds true. And even in motherhood, that holds true, sure. right? Sure. Putting in the hard work. <laughs> I, I mean, I have children that are much older than yours. So I now look back and see that hard work that I put in, it pays off later. It really does. So it's, it's such a great piece of advice. Mm -hmm. So the question that I asked everyone that I interview is, as a woman, um, do you remember when you hit six figures? And do you remember what that felt like? Was there an emotional, do you, do you have an emotional reaction to that when you did? I think it's a, it's a sense of accomplishment. Is, is really what you, what you feel. Mm -hmm. you, you work hard and you aspire towards a goal and it's nice when that finally happens. And you know, it doesn't come the way that you ever anticipate it's going to when you start that journey. <laughs> it, it takes more time, sometimes it takes less time, Sometimes it takes, you know, it just takes, it takes work and, and you learn about yourself along the way. And, and really the real accomplishment isn't as much the, this, that, that six figures, it's, it's what it took to get there. And, you know, and it, you should be proud of yourself. So that's very well said. Yeah. 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 You definitely learn a lot about yourself in any, I think in anything that pushes you and makes you grow, what you Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm referring to. So, sure. So, podcasts, books, do you have time for any of that? Do you do <laughs> any of that right now? Have you in the past? I, I know you're in an intense stage of life right now. <laughs> I'm just grateful that you gave me the time to do this interview with you. So. Sure. I don't do any podcasts or books at this point. I just kind of try to put one foot in front of the other and get through my day, to be honest with you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a book but, from the past that had an impact on you? 
Not, not really. I mean, there's people I think that have had impact yeah. an impact on me, mm -hmm. and and you know you, you see how other people slug it out, and I think too one of the the things that's very um, I don't know what the right word for this is, but but mind mind opening is when you are younger and you're starting out. There are certain things that you don't really understand why somebody does something a certain way, and you, you're why are they doing that? And then you get older, and then you get into a position where you're actually managing people and and more in charge of your life as opposed to just an employee, and you have an aha moment, and you and you realize why. And things start to make sense that didn't make sense to you before, mm -hmm. um, which I think is just kind of, it's just the evolution of, of, you know, a career really is what it is. And the evolution of, of growth and um, now I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. But <laughs> so, okay. So another question, what am I not asking you that you think would be important? So we kind of have two different types of listeners. We have mm -hmm. the listener that would be already in kind of a similar position to you where she's earning six figures and she just loves listening to the podcast because it's other people that she can relate to and maybe kind of hear a little bit of the same kinds of things that she went through, right? And then we have a lot of listeners that are really aspiring to six figures. Mm -hmm. Anything that I didn't ask you that you can say you know, this was a really pivotal point for me or a really pivotal lesson for me. I think whenever you are in business, you are ultimately selling something, right? We're all salespeople. And I think that you have to remember that. And if you treat the sale as giving something to somebody as opposed to trying to make a sale, it makes you not have to feel like a salesperson or even really be a salesperson because you're providing a product that people need and there's value in that product. And I think also just in terms of building a business, you need to have a methodology for how you do things. People don't want to come in and just have something and just various things presented to them. They want it to be streamlined. So when I present estate plans to, to our clients, we go through, we explain what the process is, and we have a very methodical approach to how we, we deal with it. And this really applies to, to any business because it's overwhelming for people. Mm -hmm. So with anything that's overwhelming, which is basically anything that someone's coming to you for, because otherwise they would just do it themselves, um, it's breaking down what you're providing into a process. And, you know, for example, we do with, with our estate plans, we'll always do a diagram and a cover letter that bullet points things and goes through things in a way that's very streamlined and people can understand it and relate to it. And, and that's important because we have that process and people understand it and they don't just feel like they're coming into an attorney's office who thinks that they're smarter than they are and just saying, do this. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a process. And with anything that you sell, it has to be a process. You have to think about how you're marketing, what you're providing, and what the value is. It also, I noticed with your process, it helps with the fear in the process as mm -hmm. well because you know what to expect. So I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. And I think it's true in any business. Um, I noticed in my business when we put systems in place, it went a lot better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the entire. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. true. Right. So more children? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Three is enough for me. Three is enough for me. And yeah, the second, the third one was sort of a bit of a surprise, but you know, we're glad that we have the boy, right? <laughs> yeah. But their children are great. They, I think they keep you they keep you real. They realize, they make you realize sometimes that you don't have the skill sets that you thought that you did, <laughs> such as patience. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> and they try you and they, they test you and they push you, but they're great. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we love them, right? Yeah. <laughs> raising a business and raising so, children at the same time. Yeah. It's challenging. So... One of the things that you mentioned is that you love what you do because you get to help people. And I think a lot of times for those that have never interacted with an attorney like you, they might think attorneys are maybe a little bit scary. Um, and so tell, tell me a little bit about how you would say to someone, 
here's why there's so much value in what I do for someone. Give us your, I guess it would be kind of like a sales pitch, but not sure. really, right? Because you bring so much value. So how would you describe that to someone that maybe didn't realize what you do in the area of law that you practice in? Sure. I mean, I do think that there are some people that don't realize what, what the value of an estate plan is. They think I can just go to LegalZoom and, and do this myself. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, if they don't see that value and I try to explain to them, look, um, you know, you can go to LegalZoom, but you're filling in a form and the form is only as good as you fill it in. Mm -hmm. and you don't really necessarily know what you're doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that can be a problem. Um, but the value that we, we bring is being able to provide really what it is, is, is our resources and our experience mm -hmm. and knowledge and what I've seen go wrong and making sure that things don't go wrong or trying our best to try to prevent things from going wrong mm -hmm. for in your situation. Mm -hmm. Um and so that's really, a, it's, it's always a value proposition. And, and the reality is you're not going to sell everybody on the value proposition. And you, there's no purpose in trying too hard to sell somebody who's not going to get it on the value proposition. You just let them go elsewhere. <laughs> or unfortunately, so, they end up experiencing the things that you're trying to protect them from, right? Exactly. And then they realize in the long run. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I can, you know, give an example of just something very basic with a, with a legal Zoom pro product. If you set up a trust and you don't fund it, you're not going to ever... You know, it's not going to be as effective as you thought it was because mm -hmm. it's not funded. It's not going to avoid probate. Um, that's maybe beyond the scope of some of the listeners here. <laughs> yeah, but, it's but also I saw one where there was a blended family situation. So there were kids from two different relationships and they had created their plan on. Uh, and they what they did is they bypassed one set of children because of the way they filled in the form. So if one of them passed away, oh, wow. everything went to the surviving spouse and then to the surviving spouse's kids. And if the other passed away, so basically one, if they kept the plan the way it was, they were bypassing a whole family line that they didn't intend to bypass and didn't realize that they had done that because they had done it themselves. Right. Again, um, they just don't know what they're sure, looking for, right? Where sure. you have this history of... You don't know what's important. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that we have a questionnaire where we try to identify red flags that we want to go into more with a client. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't necessarily know what's important, and that can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. And something that, I mean, I actually wouldn't have thought of. And I've been around attorneys for a very, very long time. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, we're usually the first attorney that anybody's ever gone to see. So there is a fear level associated with that because mm -hmm. people, you know, it, it, an attorney, they, they think of what they see on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Not this cute, <laughs> and, sweet. <laughs> so part of the process is just making somebody feel comfortable. That's really what I try to do the first five minutes that I'm meeting with a client is get them comfortable and get them to tell me a little bit about themselves. And then from what information they give me and from my leading questions, I can figure out what's important and develop a plan and put that together for them. Yeah. And the best way to help them. So important. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for your thank time. You. I honestly, thank you. I know your time is very limited, so I really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.